sunshine and in rain, they had waited, some for almost two days. Right along the route, there were groups and parties, encampments and picnics, for they were all determined to see. Nothing was going to stop them getting a good place. Prince Charles was obviously up early to have a look too. And now, Her Majesty, looking radiant in her wonderful gown, leaves the palace. In a moment, with her husband by her side, she will be driving out on her way to coronation past the biggest and most enthusiastic crowds London has ever known. Princess Anne, Prince Charles, soon to go to the Abbey himself, waves to his mother. This was the moment for which so many had patiently waited. Here she comes, dramatic, thrilling, magnificent. Tens of thousands take up the cheering, cheers of loyalty, admiration and affection for our young and lovely Queen on this, her day of day. the mall, that royal route, bright with its graceful arches of triumph and of promise. Through Admiralty Arch to Trafalgar Square, never had so many people from Britain and from overseas gathered to witness so dazzling an event. Down on the embankment, a special place had been reserved for 30,000 children to see and cheer. The Queen had a special smile for them, for indeed they will be the new Elizabethan. the Queen approaches the place where Edward the Confessor founded a shrine nearly a thousand years ago. She comes in state to be invested with all the symbols of majesty and to dedicate herself anew to the service of her subjects. At the annex, the Duke of Norfolk, the Earl Marshal, awaits to receive his sovereign before the coronation service, a service of historic ritual and great solemnity. I was glad when they said unto me, we will go into the house of the Lord. To the music of the 122nd Psalm, the Queen passes through the nave and the cry of Vivat comes from scholars of Westminster School. Her Majesty moves into the theater where her mother, her sister and the peers of the realm, including her husband, are already assembled and takes her seat in the chair of estate. Now, the first and necessary step in the traditional ritual, the Queen must be accepted by the people. I here present unto you 
Queen Elizabeth, your undoubted queen. Wherefore, all you who are come this day to do your homage and service, are you willing to do the same? The people, having recognized the Queen, the Archbishop administers the coronation oath. Madam, is your Majesty willing to take the oath? I am willing. Will you solemnly promise and swear to govern the peoples of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the Union of South Africa, Pakistan, and Ceylon, and of your possessions and the other territories to any of them belonging or pertaining, according to their respective laws and customs. I solemnly promise so to do. The Bible on which the Queen has taken her oath and sealed it with a kiss is presented to her for the first time by the moderator of the Church of Scotland. Here is wisdom. This is the royal law. These are the lively oracles of God. The anointing takes place under a canopy of cloth of gold for this part of the ceremony is withheld even from the eyes of those present. When the congregation again see their queen, the character of this consecration is symbolized by her vestments resembling those of a priest. These, the Colobium Sindonis and Supertunica, envelop her as she returns to receive the spurs of chivalry which the Lord Great Chamberlain presents to her. The sword of state being too big to wield, another sword representing it is delivered to the queen. She rises and carries it to the altar in token of submission of her authority to God. The armils or bracelets, a gift from governments of the Commonwealth countries, are put upon the queen's wrists. And then the majestic emblem, the golden robe royal, is placed around her shoulders. The orb, which is the symbol of the dominion of the cross over the world, is presented to her. The ring is slipped over the fourth finger of the Queen's right hand as a seal of Catholic faith. Lord Walton offers the glove. The scepter with the cross in the Queen's right hand stands for power and justice. The rod with the dove in her left for equity and mercy. One emblem still remains to be given to the Queen, the one that symbolizes monarchy in the eyes of all the people. The Archbishop lifts the crown of St. Edward and holds it for a moment above the Queen's head. As he gently lowers it, a great shout is raised from the congregation. The word has gone forth, the Queen is crowned. The newly crowned queen moves now from King Edward's chair to mount her throne, which is set back in the middle of the theater. Having made her promises to her people, it is the turn of her people to make their promises of allegiance to her. And among the first to declare himself is her own husband, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. I, Philip, who become your liege man of life and limb, and of earthly worship, and faith and truth I will bear unto you 
live and die against all manner of folk, so help me God. Rising, he kisses the Queen's cheek and touches the Queen's crown in token of his readiness to help her bear its burden. After him comes the Queen's uncle, the Duke of Gloucester. Homage is likewise paid by the senior peer in each degree, swearing faith and truth to bear unto the Queen, to live and die against all manner of folks. The whole ceremony has been enacted within the framework of a communion service. And now the Queen leaves her throne to take the sacrament. This is not to be photographed, but in humility and piety, she draws near to the altar in company with her husband. And so the ceremony ended. After a short pause, places are taken for the procession from the abbey. Queen, now arrayed in royal purple and wearing the imperial state crown, leaves the chapel. in her right hand and in her left hand the orb, Queen Elizabeth passes from the Abbey, consecrated and dedicated to her life work by the solemn and time-hallowed ritual of coronation. the troops marching ahead in the great procession that followed the coronation service were indeed a splendid sight to see. All the services were represented and there were superlatively smart and loyal units from all over the Commonwealth and Empire. Nearly 40,000 servicemen and women played their part on coronation day. Meanwhile, after a brief rest at Westminster Abbey, Her Majesty is about to join the procession round the heart of her capital. Carrying orb and scepter and wearing the imperial state crown, she enters the golden coach again. Every yard of the way, the sincerity of the great ovation offered by her people must have been fully apparent. The crowd certainly numbered millions, and there was no one who could fail to be moved and thrilled as the Queen and the Duke approached and drove by. There was only one fault to find with this tremendous day, the weather and that indeed behaved shamefully. But driving rain that would normally have sent everyone scurrying to shelter was completely ignored. Just look how it pelted as the coach entered the park and passed Apsley House. Park, through Marble Arch, and so to Oxford Street. London had done its very best to be worthy of so joyful an occasion with a splendid flourish of flags and flowers and emblems.
to Piccadilly Circus, where Eros looked down from his gilded cape. As the Queen, surrounded on every side by love and respect, passed this famous centre, troops at the head of the procession were already circling the Queen Victoria Monument at the palace. The royal journey was nearly ended, though everyone of course had waited for Her Majesty's return along the mouth. Coronation Day had indeed caught the imagination of people all over the world, but it was most particularly a day of rejoicing for Her Majesty's subjects. It was a day that surpassed expectations, and perhaps the magic of it was that our Queen is everything that we could wish a Queen to be. back a Buckingham Palace crowd at moments such as this. They want to close up and they're always rewarded. still wears the coronation bracelet, and to Prince Charles there's something new and curious. Then the flypass by Royal Air Force and Royal Canadian Air Force meteors and sabers. It's the day's final salute except from the cheering throng. A wonderful day and we pray that the Queen's reign will be glorious too.